Okay, so hi and welcome everybody to ApacheCon 2020 and the first talk of today. Um, my name is Klaus Ibsen and I'm joined by Andrea Cosentino. Hello. And we are here to give a talk about what's new with Apache Camel 3. Uh, I'm a software engineer from Red Hat, uh, Apache member, uh, and I'm working primarily on the Camel project, actually for a very long time. I uh, wrote a couple of books on Camel and I'm based in Denmark. Andrea, can you tell a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Klaus. So I'm Andrea Cosentino, and I'm based in, uh, in Italy, in Rome. I'm software engineer in Red Hat, and I'm Apache member, and actually the Camel chair. And you can find me at uh, on Twitter and on GitHub. So let's get back to Klaus. OK. So at first, we will give you a little introduction to Camel, you know, for the folks that are new to Camel or only know a little bit about Camel. But the main focus of this talk is about the new products in Camel 3 that are leading the innovation, uh, Camel K, Camel Cross, and Camel Kafka connectors. Okay, so let's start with what's Camel. That's a great question. And this is something we've been trying for over a decade to answer. But I think uh, you can picture Camel as the Swiss knife of integration. Now, Camel has been around for a long time, so it's actually a giant Swiss knife. Well, it comes with a lot of functionality. And thank God you can choose which functionality you want to use, so you don't have to get the full-blown Camel, but you can just pick and choose what you want to use from Camel. So Camel is actually a Java-based integration framework. It's a Java library, and it's based on a book called Base, uh, enterprise, enterprise integration patterns. So you can go and use proven software designs for you know, building integrations. And to connect to many different systems, you use uh, connectors or common components, and common comes with over 300. And you go about use these components and patterns in where you describe how you connect to systems using integration flows, or they are called wraps in camel. And we're gonna see them in, in, in the demos as well. And Camel can integrate to everything, or almost everything. So Camel also works with many of the popular Java runtimes. So you can run it on you know, Tomcat, Carafe, Vertex, Quarkus, uh, Spring Boot, whatever you want. But you can also run it standalone. You don't have to have a, a runtime, specific runtime for running Camel. As in the end, it's just a library. But the star of Camel is actually you, the community. So in Camel has been around for 13 years at Apache. And over the time, you know, there has been a growing, growing community. So it's actually, I, I would say, the biggest open source integration community and software today. And uh, we have a lot of contributors to the project, uh, especially via GitHub, which is, makes it much easier to contribute source code changes and documentation and so on. And the graph on the bottom shows the commits on the main brands over the many years. Now, I have to say that we have probably never had a, uh, taken a holiday. Maybe, you know, by start of 2008, there was a little break. And you might say, OK, what's the spike in 2019 onwards? And that's actually the essence of this talk is when we started really to work on Camel 3. So just to give you uh, some basics on Camel. So the Camel routes are front and center. And also what you're going to see in the demos. So basically, you can say to Camel, I just want to take some files from a file system and drop them on message queue from file to DMS. You know, two lines of code, or if you put it in one line, you can actually do that. And Camel, you can also use XML. And what we're going to see in other demos, you can use YAML, Groovy, Kotlin, and whatnot. But this is the high level abstraction you can use Camel to design integrations. The architect of Camel is what you see here on the illustration. In the center, we have Camel context, that is runtime Camel. Then the idea is you can add routes to the context. And in these routes, you can use enterprise integration patterns where you can do routing, transformation, enrichment, and so on. 
And then to connect to many different systems, they use these camel components, which are you know illustrated here in the bottom. And that architecture was from the beginning of camel. So this illustration applies to camel one and camel two, and also today with camel three. So this is really fantastic. So okay, Klaus, but if I just want to show me some code and show me how I can just do a basic camel application without any runtime or whatsoever. So okay, we go basic, the main class, public static void main. I want to create a camel context, and there's a constructor for that using new default camel context. So there's no magic. Then you can add wraps to it. And this example, we want to keep everything on a single slide. So we use an inline uh, class with a route builder that comes from camel. The configure method, that's where you uh, use your camera routes. So I just say from a timer and the log. Then I start camel, but start is not blocking. So I need to keep the JVM running. And for this slide, I just run it for 10 seconds and then I stop it. So this is the basic of, you know, you can run camel anywhere. This is just a public static void main class. But if you run with, let's say, modern runtime like Spring Boot, all you can do with Camel to add a route is to create a class, extend route builder that comes from Camel, add the Spring add component annotation. So Spring Boot detects this one, and that Camel can detect it too. And inside, you can use all the Spring annotation you like with dependency injection and so on. If you run another runtime, uh, is Quarkus, which we're going to see in the demo uh, later on, you can do the same thing, add a route, and build your route in the configure method. And also with Quarkus, you can use uh, CDI dependency injection if you like. And Quarkus also supports the spring annotation. So you have both the uh, V1. OK, that was a very quick uh, basics of Camel. Now I would like to hand it over to Andrea that can talk about the new Camel tree projects. OK. Thanks, Klaus. Uh, when we start to work on, on Camel Tree, uh, the, the aim of the project was creating some kind of uh, ecosystem, and uh, I believe we accomplished the, the target. So uh, in Camel, we have uh, actually six projects. So we have Camel, which is the, the basic for all the sub projects we are going to show. Uh, we have Camel Spring Boot. Uh, uh, so if you want to run Camel and uh, your routes on uh, on Spring Boot, this is the project you have to to choose. Uh, for the OSGI lovers, so there is uh, Camel on uh, Caraf. So we base uh, this project on the the Caraf OSGI container, and uh, we have the we have Camel K uh, as project for uh, you know Camel on the cloud. So uh, this is our project based on uh, for Kubernetes and Kinetic and Camel Quarkus, which is the one of the newest project in the ecosystem. So for optimized JVM and GraalVM project, and this is uh, a shiny new project. And the last one, uh, the latest one, uh, Camel Kafka Connector. And uh, we will talk about this in this session and with a little demo. Uh, and, okay, so about the, the camera releases. Uh, we choose to uh, use an approach like Java for Camel 3. So we want to release uh, two long term support release during the year. So we already released uh, a first uh, LTS release, which is the 3.4. And we are already at uh, 3.4.4 patch releases. Uh, it was released to release it today. And uh, we plan to release a second LTS by the end of uh, uh, December, December uh, uh, 2021. 20, and uh, this will be based on, will support Java 8, Java 11, and uh, Java 14. And yeah, so uh, get back to Klaus. Yeah, thank you, Andrea. So, Camel K. So, this is a new product in Camel Tree, and it's really an exciting new product, but also somewhat different than a typical Camel product. So, what is Camel K? So, the tagline is it's a lightweight integration platform based on Camel, born on Kubernetes with serverless superpowers. So, you can run Camel on a vanilla Kubernetes. You can run it on different containers like OpenShift and others. 
but you get the best of K if you run it on a K-native power cluster that is truly serverless. But what we're going to see here for the demos is option one, running Kamen on a vanilla Kubernetes. Uh, I will use Minikube to run it on a local laptop. But so why Camel K and, and also from a developer point of view, uh, how do we use it? So the trend with, with, with the cloud is to move to a way of being able to abstract away a lot more details and just allow you to focus on you know, building your applications and have those uh, those workloads running on on the cloud, and and take and, and the cloud container take care of all that. And that is also a philosophy of K. So we don't want to you know deal with a Spring Boot or Quarkus or any kind of runtime per se, but just let make the camera route front and center, and then you can take that and give it to K and you know tell it run this. So. What you do is to create an integration file. And that could be a lot more than just Java, you know, Groovy Kotlin, JavaScript, XML, YAML. So far, I think we have six or so. Um, on the slide here, it, is it Java or Groovy? It doesn't really matter so much. So we have a couple of routes. We are taking some chats from a Telegram bot, doing some message transformation, sending to a Kafka topic, and picking up those messages again from the topic and calling it the HTTP service or something like that. But then you can use camel K and say, there's a command line tool, a CLI, camel run, and the name of the file. And then it will run on, on the cloud on Kubernetes. How that's done is a bit magic, and I'll talk about that uh, in a second. The high level architecture of camel K is you know, illustrated in two sets. So we have a sort of like a developer environment, and then we have the cloud. Um, besides remote cloud, it could be, you know, but my demo is running on my laptop, so you can say it's a local cloud, it's just Kubernetes. Doesn't really matter where your, your cloud is running, is it you know, Amazon or is it on premise or whatever, just is Kubernetes. And in Kubernetes, there's a way for Kubernetes to extend itself using something called a custom resource definition, CRDs. So what we've done with the Camel project is to create an integration custom resource those resources, uh, CRDs, are being monitored by uh, operators. So we have a camel K operator that reacts when new custom resources are being added or existing are being modified or if they're deleted, whatever it is. It watches for changes and then it figures out what to do. So it's a state machine to figure out what to do. So what we can do is to, using the command line tool and install this custom resource push that into the cloud, and then the operator reacts and figures out what to do, and you know, build the part, or build a container image and run that as a, as a container and so on. Oh, sorry, the, the dogs are back. And you can do that really fast. We're gonna see that in the, in, the, in the demo. And for the demo, I'm gonna go on my terminal in a second. So I just wanna tell, on the top, we have text editor. In the center, we have the terminal. And on the bottom, I'm watching the part activity. So let me go here. Uh, this is the terminal. So here I have the camel version, camel K version, one one zero. It's not the latest one. The latest one is one one one, and one two is coming next month. On the bottom, uh, you can see there's only the operator running. So what I'm going to do is to create an integration and run that one. And camel binary tool actually allows you to initialize a new integration from scratch without having any. So I can say camel init and then the name of the file. And this and because I say it's a Java file, it will actually create a Java file. So I can just use a, a poor man's editor of a subline and do some code changes to that. And here you can see what gives me sort of like a basic route. So if I want to run this one, I can say camel run and the name of the file. And for demo here, I say I want to run it in dev developer mode, dev slash slash dev. That means it will, you know. You can see the log activity immediately here. Um, you can see here it says hello camel K from Java. So it's running this one. And you can see down here there's actually a, a, a pod running now. So I can go up here in the editor. I can say hello camel Q. And let's make it run a little faster. And I can save the file. As you can see, it does a hot deployment. And now there's a, it's starting up a new container with the new integration. 
and here's running. Hello, common queue. That's running what's faster, right? And I can do other code changes if I want. Uh, you know, uh, let's go back to and something like that. And hello, common queue two. And I save the file. Let's see what's going on. And now it should redeploy this one. And oh, something is error. I get a compilation error. There's a semicolon missing. Okay, so I can fix the semicolon and save the file. Okay, so this was actually a bit on purpose, but it's also to pull away the curtain a bit how this magic happens because what happens is that the CRD is the integration file. So the CRD is basically just the source code that gets installed inside the Kubernetes cluster. The operator takes that source code and then figures out, okay, this is the source code. This is the kernel route. This kernel route are using these number of kernel components. This is Java code and blah, blah, blah. And then it figures like, okay, to run this one, I need a container that has these features, these dependencies, and this version of Camel and so on. It goes and find the existing build image that has these certified dependency set. If not, Camel K can you know, build one automatically for you. If it has one, it can quickly start that one. So it doesn't have to build a, uh, or a new container every time you do a code change. So when the container starts out, it takes the source code and just do a little compilation with that one. That's why it's so fast. Now, you can also, for example, if you want to do a YAML file, this is the latest one. This is, you know, if you really is a, a Kubernetes uh, person, you can also run YAML. Uh, so you can say camel run to, oh, this is dude. And now if you say camel get, now I didn't do the um, dev mode, so it's actually running without developer mode. So it's running now. So I can actually tail the logs. There's a lab called Stern. This is a nice little way of quickly tail logs from any Kubernetes container. And so this is actually from YAML. Hello, Camel K from YAML. Uh, Camel K is really interesting. Uh, let's see what was our one. This is, I'm actually going a bit off the script now because I'm changing this one to stream. So I'm using a new camera component, and what I'm going to do is to say, okay, I want to delete, dude. So there's no integration running, and I save this file to a stream component. And just looking at my bills, okay, there's all the bills are 19 days old, so that's where you can see it's a bit old. So I say, camera run, dude. Let's see what happens. Um, I would say it's building kit. And why is that? This is what I talked about before. Now I'd say change the source code to use a new camel component, the stream component. So the camel K has detected that there's no um, existing image that has these dependencies set that is camel K and YAML and the stream component. So what it does is to build a new container image that includes the stream component. So it can run this uh, integration. And it can take a little while because um, it has to go to the internet, download the Daven dependencies and use Maven and whatnot to build all that kind of stuff. So I was hoping it was going a little quicker. But to, no, it's actually failed, sorry. And I actually kind of suspected this because the build is quite fast normally. And the problem is that I have actually restarted my laptop and sometimes, you know, Minikube, when you shut it down and start it again all the time, it can actually, you know, uh, fail. So I actually have to restart, um, reset my Camel K installation to fix that. So this is a little bug in Camel K we need to work on and get fixed. Anyway, just wanted to go a little bit off the script before continuing. And we go back to the slides. I have to find the window with the slides. Oops. Where's that window? Here it is. Sorry. So, Camel K, uh, as I said, it's not just Java. We saw a little bit of YAML, even though the build failed. 
uh, Groovy Kotlin and JavaScript is also there. They're a little more experimental than these top three that are you know more mature and, and baked in. Of course, the other ones is something we would like to you know uh, work better. So the other project I want to talk about is Camel Quarkus. So in that we have to talk a bit about Java. Uh, so Java has been around for 25 years, awesome uh, language and platform, but some people say it's a little bit slow. And another problem with Java, especially around uh, cloud and containers is that it's a bit fat. Uh, so you can actually stack together other alternatives and run a lot more workloads on the same hardware capacity than uh, Java stack. Even let's say one of the leading cloud native Java stack like Spring Boot will you know, easily take up hundreds of megabytes. And that's a problem. Uh, so the two problems is the slowness of Java and actually the slowness of Java is not at runtime when the JVM is, is warmed up and running for a long time. That's exactly performance, some of the best performance, but it's the scaling. So to start up a Java application, the JVM needs to you know, warm up and do many things. And also when you terminate an application with Java, it tends to, okay, I need to do some other things. So uh, that's a problem. And also the, what is called scaling to zero. This is something we really want to achieve in serverless uh, landscape, um, because if you run applications in, uh, in a container or a cloud, you tend to pay by utilizations how much CPU and IO and whatnot you're using. So if you don't have a need for that applications, what if that application could scale to zero and the platform could automatically scale up applications when there's a demand for it? So it happens on request-based scaling and not so much about <laughs> CPU and memory base that are traditional ones where you can you know, add more nodes if that's needed. So we need something that can do this automatically and that's the serverless paradigm. And how can we make Camel or Java work with that? And that's where Quarkus enters the stage. So Quarkus is subsonic subatomic Java. Now it actually comes for this physics world. So if you have an atom, then the smallest item inside an atom will is known as a quarkus, hence the name quarkus. Uh, the other tagline is a bit more blurry or hype. So basically, it allows to run Java um, native compile using Graal, or but also optimize on regular Java on an open JDK. And it works with a number of great Java libraries, like Camel, for example. It has a minimal footprint in both in terms of mem memory and also the first time to response. And that's really imp uh, important with the scaling. So you can scale up your application, warm up and really be ready, get a traffic in, process that request and send back a response. This is really important. And as you can see here at the green, that's native compile using Graal. That's really fast. The blue one is JVM based with Quarkus, so it's that's still Java on the JVM, and it's much faster than, let's say, uh, a Spring Boot application. Uh, here's a screenshot of running Camel um, with native compile using Graal on Java 11 on my Mac. Uh, it takes 24 milliseconds to start. Uh, the fi file is 50 megabytes, and it takes about 28 megabytes of memory. So let's go and look a little demo. Uh, I have to mind the time. Okay. Uh, and this is my favorite camel. It's a Lego camel. So, and Lego is from Denmark, so good on them. So let's go again to after slides and go to the terminal. This time I actually have another terminal here. So I'm actually in the camel quarker source code on the examples. And we have an ex existing example called HTTP log. So what I'm going to do now is to open Visual Code uh, in that directory. And yes, yes, welcome. So basically, that example has a standard Quarkus application with a REST service slash hello. You get the hello response. And there's also additional camel route that is saying camel slash hello. You, you get a response saying camel runs on a host name. And then 
So you can actually run this one. I just want to show you from inside here. So this is Quarkus, Maven Quarkus Dev. So Quarkus has a Maven plugin. You can run in your product in developer mode. So similar to what we saw with Camel K with the Camel slash less uh, dev mode. So, but this is, you know, standard Java running on this laptop that is a bit uh, maxed out. It's a bit slow, I can see. Uh, and it's starting to boot up. And let's go to, uh, I have a terminal here. You should have a standard. This is a welcome page from uh, Quarkus. Hello. And if I say hello, this is Quarkus saying hello. And if I say camel hello, I say camel runs on. So the idea is similar to what we did on, um, you can say camel three runs on. And if I refresh here, then, okay, oops, camel three. You know, it's a bit slow on my laptop, so that's why. But you can see you get immediately a uh, hot deploy my favorite thing here. And you also get like uh, metrics. So you can see a number of messages processed. Uh, there should be a one zero somewhere, your total counters. And you've also got health checks with Pamela and so on. So it's, it's container ready, right? But this is not why I wanted to show you so much. I just want to say, okay, so this is um, that. All I want to show you is two things. Um, one also detooling here, actually. I didn't show it for Camel K, but it, so here I say two, and then the tooling understands all the Camel components. So I can say Kafka, I wanna to go to a cheese topic, and then all these Kafka uh, options you can read about, client ID, what is that? The client is a user specific, blah, blah, blah. So you get the tooling support here as well. Uh, okay, so that's just a side step. So what I wanna show you now is to here, uh, if I run this, application I actually pre I have compiled this as a native application so if I run this the, the native application I can go find my runner class this is the one so now it starts up native compile the same application and you can see camel start up in two milliseconds and quarks itself with everything that quarks does is 17 milliseconds and we got the same application on 8080 with health checks and metrics and because it's just out of everything is zero. Okay, that's fine, Klaus. But what if I want to run many of these applications? So I have a script here that runs 100 instances of that one. And I also have a script here that says, how much memory does that use? So that totally takes about three and a half gigabytes of memory. So 35, 30 some megabyte per applications. And of course, 8080 is there, so I can say hello, camel on 8080. No, camel hello. But I can also use one of the other ports that has 100 ports from 8000 to 8099. So I can choose another number, 49, and they all run, right? And so that's fine, but what if I kill all of them? Now I kill all the camel applications. They all did. P kill. So now I want to run all this, the same application again, and I go back and I refresh my browser, and it's up and running. So this is the the fast startup time with the native compilation, Gravium, Camel, and everything. So you get this scaling up fast and scaling down fast. So this is the you know Camel K or Camel on containers with Corvus that helps to be really fast. Okay, I'm just gonna kill them one. Oops, P kill. And then move on with the slides, if I can find them. So, so now I'd like to hand it over to Andrea to talk about the Kafka connector. Thanks, Klaus. So, uh, Camel Kafka Connector is the newest project in the Camel ecosystem, and uh, uh, we need to do a quick intro introduction on what is Kafka. So, Kafka basically is a distributed streaming platform, or you can also think about it like uh, a pub sub messaging broker. And like Camel is a, it's an ecosystem, so uh, you have multiple multiple third party integration and so on. 
and the uh, camel kafka connector is focused on the kafka connect framework um so basically we need to talk about the kafka connect and the uh, kafka connect is is a uh, is, is again a framework and uh, it, basically you can use kafka connect to uh, define source and sync connector to stream data in and out uh, uh, Kafka broker and those connectors are pluggable so you can use already available connectors on different marketplace uh, in the in the internet or on or, or central or wherever it is or and you can write your own uh, custom connector and uh, what are the the basic feature of of, of, of Kafka connector basically there's Distributed, uh, it is distributed and scalable by default, and there's also uh, automatic offset management. Uh, if you <clears throat> if you if you think about Kafka Connect uh, and uh, and about Camel, uh, you can see there are probably some uh, relation between them, and uh, I think the slide are. Uh, Slow, yeah, okay. So uh, we need now we can talk about what is Camel Kafka Connector, and basically is a, a big Kafka Connector built built on top of Apache Camel. So we started this as an internal proof of concept at uh, Red Hat, and uh, we donated the code to uh, the Apache Software Foundation in December in December 2019. And the basic idea of this project is to reuse what we already have uh, in Camel. Uh, so components and all the stuff and all the shiny stuff we have in Camel as connector. So the aim of this project is how to generate uh, connectors starting from uh, what we already have as component. And uh, the, the aim of this project is writing less code as possible. So use the, those connectors just through configuration. And uh, on, the, on, the, on the Camel website, you have already all the information about the documentation and the auto generation of those connectors. Uh, in the demo, uh, this is a recorded demo, uh, we will show uh, the how to use a source connector from S3, so from an S3 bucket, and the sync connector, mm, and in this case is an SQF connector. So we will we will load a file on an S3 bucket, and uh, we will use the source connector to ingest this file into a Kafka topic, and then we will uh, move uh, to an SQS queue. Uh, as as I said before, uh, the the basic the basic idea of this project is being able of uh, avoiding writing code uh, unless you really want it. And uh, so this is how you can uh, define a connector with the configuration file. So you just have to add the reference to a connector class, and uh, as you may see, there is a mixture between. Kafka Connect option and the uh, Camel main option. So in this case, uh, we need to specify credential and uh, other option like auto, auto close body, body at uh, the endpoint level for S3 and reference the topic you want to connect to or you want to write to. And this is the same for the SQS connector. In this case, we will need to reference a connector class which is the SQS sync connector and uh, specify the topic where we want to uh, from what from where we want to consume and just adding the the specification for the for the credential so now uh, through the video we will show how this how this work so uh, ah, in this demo uh, I already have the the configuration of uh, of the plugin path done so if we show the properties, as you may see, there is the plugin path specified there, playground connectors. I already downloaded the, the, the two connectors from the Camel website. So we have the S3 Kafka connector and the SQS Kafka connector. And we just need to unzip them in the, in the connector folder. Um, 
after that we need to uh, we need to define the, the configuration of the connectors and also what we wanted to we wanted to send to to the s3 bucket in this case uh, uh, i'm i'm showing what are the properties so uh, as i already show we we have the component credential for s3 and uh, the connector class and key converter and value converter in this case and uh, we have the same configuration but for the sync so for the sqs connector and uh, 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 we want to the, we want to upload the file called uh, hello message txt uh, which contains hello from kafka connector as bad um, now the mm, we just need to to run our cluster in this case so uh, th this is just a one node cluster a single node cluster of, uh, of kafka and uh, uh, once everything has uh, set up so the kafka connect is already is already up and uh, we just need to we just need to run the the, the connector so we just need to use the the configuration we have so in this case, uh, the command is simple. So we need to use the connect standalone and uh, the connect standalone properties and the configuration for both the connector. So in this case, the SQS connector and uh, S S3 connector properties. And uh, once the once the Kafka connect start, we will see we we have uh, two different camel contacts with two different routes, uh, one for the S3 consumer and the other one for the SQS producer. And uh, now we are ready to uh, to upload the file on uh, the S3 bucket called Camel Kafka Connect. So uh, I, I'll choose the low message to TXT from my file system. And uh, we should see the the file uh, appear on the uh, on the bucket, and uh, we should see the file disappear in uh, in, a, in a few milliseconds because we have delete after read to true by default. Yeah, and uh, now we are able to to polling the camel one uh, SQSQ, and uh, as you may see, there is the hello uh, from camel Kafka connector message. Uh, just to show we are not cheating, uh, I repeat the, the operation in this video. So uh, just to be sure. And uh, again, I reload again the hello message txt. Uh, it will be consumed by the source connector and it will disappear from, from the bucket. And on the other side, on the SQS queue, oh, we should see now we have a second message with hello from Kafka, Kafka, Camel Kafka connector. So uh, this is more or less how uh, the connector work uh, and the Camel Kafka connector work. And these uh, two connectors are auto-generated auto starting from the, from the components. Uh, there is space for uh, uh, more work and uh, more feature, but basically this is how, how it works. Okay, uh, let's get back to Klaus now. Thank you. Um, so before closing, just wanted to point out where you can find more materials on, on Camel. Uh, of course, the main website itself, there's some links to YouTube videos. Uh, for example, the Camel K demo I did in the beginning, there's a too many video there. The 100 camels with the uh, Quarkus kind of thing is also recorded. And we have also another Camel Kafka connector video. Um, but if you are interested in more of that product, then there's another talk later today uh, with Hugo and, and Andrea. Uh, not you, Andrea, but the other Andrea. We call him the other Andrea that will present, the, present that product. And especially if you're really interested in to K-Native and, and these kind of things and interesting in what's happening in that space, then I will recommend the last one where Nicola presents serverless integration with KMK on from KubeCon. Uh, oh, we have uh, Git repositories for many of the examples. So these are also great ways to learn more about things um, as the links here are. And that's the talk. And you can follow us on Twitter or other social media. And of course, uh, the camera product you can find on, on GitHub as well and on the Apache website. 
So thank you, and let's see if there's any questions or if you have time. Hey, Klaus. So uh, thank you and Andrea for giving an awesome talk. Uh, it's super excited to see uh, the great uh, changes that have been done in Camel 3. So we have a couple of questions. So uh, Chris wants to know, coming from craft deployments, what's a sensible way of migrating? Going to Kubernetes directly if they already have the infrastructure? Oh, that's a that's a leap. So you're talking about uh, going from a craft a passive craft deployment to the Kubernetes. Well. We have a uh, Jean Baptiste, and there's a carafe as a track as well to a uh, Pasha Corn. Um, so you can definitely also post some talks there what's happening in the carafe space. I think Jean Baptiste and those guys have some thoughts on making carafe more relevant on the container space. But so far, I would say um, what we've shown here today with the most innovative products around KMK and Quarkus and, and these things are the, the way forward also in the communities. But um, but we know there's a lot of camel users that has you know built applications on Carafe, and it's also a way, but it's a bit different on, on the container space. Yeah. Yeah, so we have another question from George. Can Camel, Camel Quarkus run on Windows? I guess that's underlying support from GraalVM that's in question here. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes and no. So one thing is really awesome thing about Quarkus is that it's also just Java. You don't have to go the full circle or full way with GraalVM or native compilation. It's just a feature that it can do and strives to be able to do. But you can get a lot of benefits just by using Quarkus and running on the stock JVMs because Quarkus itself does optimization on JVM also. So by taking a non-Quarkus application and, and and putting it inside Quarkus, then you can actually get some of that benefits, you know, reducing memory footprints, faster setup, and so on. Awesome. So uh, a couple of joke questions. So Isabella wants to see the dog, and Peter is asking, what's the breed of the dog? Oh, there are actually two dogs. And unfortunately, uh, we're talking about my dogs. Uh, one is, uh, a, what do you call it, a cotton dog. Uh, they're both uh, whites. And the other one is actually, uh, they call it actually a designer dog now. It's a mix between a Shichichu and a Maltese dog. And it's one year old, and that's the one that unfortunately learned to bark. The old dog learned the uh, the new dog to bark. Unfortunately. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we have. So look at the next session uh, that's already starting at the moment. Thank you for joining. Okay. Thank Bye. You guys. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Uh.